Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. It's 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern, so we'll go ahead and get started. We really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for hopping online with us. On behalf of the Water Environment Federation, we are excited to spend this one-hour webinar with you. Today, we're going to learn about WEF Tech Connect, the exhibiting opportunities available to you, and how we can help reach your marketing and sales goals of lead generation and brand awareness. I know we've got a mix of participants online. We're anticipating more than 300 today. Um, so we're really excited to see many familiar faces that have been long time uh, exhibiting partners with WEF. And we equally welcome uh, new organizations that are getting to know us as well. So I'd like to uh, start with introductions. My name is Kate Hawley. I am the Senior Manager of Exhibition Sales here at WEF. I'm about to reach my 10 month mark here um, and worked in exhibit sales for another association prior to joining that organization. And before working for associations, I managed corporate trade show programs across a variety of industries before coming to the show management side. So I'm really excited to be working here at WEF and also um, consider myself an, an exhibitor ambassador um, really focusing on um, what your return on investment is and making sure that um, every marketing dollar you spend is well spent. Um, so I'm excited for you to be here and look forward to hopefully connecting one-on-one -on -one with many of you after today's demo. I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie Walter so she can introduce herself. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Stephanie Walter. I'm the Director of Exhibition Operations with WEF, and I have been with WEF for nearly 20 years. I've been managing the WEF Tech Exhibition Operations since 2010. Also, I manage the WEF Tech Sponsorship Opportunities and the mobile app, if you have any questions about that as we get towards the end. I would also really appreciate you taking your time today to uh, learn about the opportunities available at WEF Tech Connect and all of the details that we're going to present to you today. And I just wanted to remind you as, as well, again, that we do have a question window that we want to encourage you to add your questions to so that we can get to those as we go along. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get us started and hand it back over to Kate. All right, thanks, Stephanie. So I'd like to share a quick overview of WEF Tech Connect. This is a fully virtual event that's creating a unique digital place for us all to gather to experience interactive education, exhibitor showcases, and networking experiences. WEF Tech Connect will enable water professionals from all over the world um, to connect, learn, and engage with each other no matter where they are. Um, we really see WEF Tech Connect as more, of a, more than a webinar or a virtual meeting. It's a dynamic, immersive learning experience that takes the best of our in-person event and reshapes it for online and delivers it all directly to you. Some of the, uh, the features that you'll learn today and see as we go through the demo are WEF Tech Connect supports a live, live and pre-recorded content. Uh, there's a data-driven connection of attendees. You'll see one-on-one -on -one appointment scheduling with exhibitors, live chats between individuals and groups, virtual meeting rooms for discussions and product demonstrations, and access to all um, the amazing and valuable content um, for one year. So this, though the event take place, takes place October 5th through 9th, those are the WEF Tech Connect dates, um, you do have access to the content 
uh, for a full year after. So the fifth through ninth, the conference and ex exhibition core hours are 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time daily. And then additionally, we have daily exhibitor power hours, which are 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Eastern each day. So many of you may be asking or wondering what exhibitor powers are, power hours are. This is a targeted time for attendees and exhibiting companies to interact. Um, so no live competing technical programming will be taking during this time, um, though we encourage you to interact with attendees and throughout, throughout the week. Um, this is really a dedicated time on the schedule for attendees and exhibiting partners to connect. So now we're going to go over to today's agenda. And this is what we're going to be learning today. During today's webinar, we will be reviewing these topics for WEF Tech Connect with a focus on the exhibiting experience. Uh, our goal is really to have a dialogue with you. So we really encourage you, as Stephanie um, shared, uh, to post your questions. Please post them in the question window uh, on your screen there. We will try and get to as many of your questions as we can. At the same time, we've got a lot of information to share with you today. Um, so watching our time, we may need to leave your question to the end. And then additionally, if we feel it is a question specific to your organization or perhaps a question that we're not experts to answer for you, we will be sure to follow up with you after the webinar. Um, and again, please do post those questions under the question section. I'd just like to add also a lot of um, common uh, questions about WEF Tech Connect and the event as a whole are answered at weftech.org forward slash FAQs. So I encourage you to look there. And finally, um, we will be posting a recording of this demo online for later viewing uh, after today. Okay, so we want to share the WEF Tech Connect survey results with you. In early June, WEF launched a survey trying to um, get feedback and opinions from our WEF Tech stakeholders. So the purpose of the survey is really to continually gather information around uh, what WEF stakeholders hope to experience as part of this virtual event. Uh, this snapshot, snapshot of the survey shares what survey respondents are really most excited about. So you can see 74% responded that they are excited specifically as part of the virtual exhibitor showcase to download PDFs or pre-recorded video content about company services and products. Um, coming in second at 67%, this, another component as part of the virtual exhibitor showcase is that they want to view live exhibitor, exhibitor demonstrations and presentations. And just for clarification, when we say exhibitor showcase, that's the exhibitor component of the uh, WEF Tech Connect platform. And then you can see additional interest at 49% in scheduling one-on-one -on -one instant live meetings with sales reps, followed by an interest in viewing 3D virtual booths, and finally, um, and very important, the matchmaking component um, that we'll review today is an important component to many WEF stakeholders. So prior to WEF Tech going completely virtual, as many of you know, WEF was planning to have a hybrid event, which meant we were gonna have both a digital and in-person component. And at that time, we had another survey out asking WEF stakeholders what is important to you related to the digital component of the event? The first important component to the event was live streaming content at a response of 24%. The second most important aspect to WEF stakeholders for a digital event was access to a virtual exhibitor showcase at 22%. So really what this is telling us is that attendees are seeking your solutions and services that you offer. And equally in my conversations with many of you online here today uh, as exhibiting partners or hopefully soon to be exhibiting partners with us, 
Um, I'm really hearing that you still require lead generation and brand awareness, and we think this is a great opportunity uh, for you to meet those goals. I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie to tell you more about the WEF Tech Connect technical program and schedule. Um, thank you very much. I do want to double check. I am hearing some questions that there is a little bit of issue with the audio and with the webinar. So I want to make sure that that is not like a widespread problem. So if you can drop that information either in the Q&A or in the chat so that we can double check. Okay, great. Glad to hear it. All right. So you should be looking at the schedule right now and we are going to be releasing the mobile app in the next week or so and the conference announcement within that same time frame. So I really just want to go over a couple of highlights of the event schedule. You can see that we have a daily see what's planned on Tuesday through Friday at 1030 and that's just to give you a quick highlight overview of what's going on each day. Ask the experts technical sessions are daily from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and then again from 3.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. and that kind of book that those kind of are on either side of the exhibitor power hours which are 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. and within that same time frame we have the exhibitor demos and the solution sessions and the solution sessions are what we are now effectively calling the exhibitor mobile sessions. And then the other thing that I want to highlight within this event schedule is the networking that we have built into each day. So you'll see that we've got a Monday night at the movies, we've got trivia night, happy hour, and then some live networking roundtables on Thursday. So we've got a wide variety of programming within this event schedule. And then just again a reminder that the actual specific dates, times, and ability to build in your particular schedule will be available on the mobile app that you can download next week. And we're going to move on to site navigation. So once you know what you want to do, and then starting on Monday the 5th, we're going to show you how to get through all of those things on the site itself. So starting immediately on the dashboard first, just to give you an overview, this is a design concept and not necessarily what you're actually going to see when you get there, just so you know that when you show up on the fifth and it doesn't look like this, don't come running to me about it. Um, but you'll see that there is a navigation bar on the top and that's gonna be visible throughout the site. So at any point in time from the top, you can get to any of our major content areas or the networking area or to the exhibitors or any of those items. And then from the dashboard itself, you'll see those same primary navigation blocks below. So again, sessions, speakers, exhibitors, network, and then just below that, what you're going to see is just a highlight block that's going to talk about what's playing or what's currently showing. And then a very quick watch now, so just an ability to jump right to that, uh, that highlighted content. And then over on the right, I want to talk quickly about our chatbot, which is Ask Niles. And for anybody who is not familiar with a chatbot, this is basically just a really quick way to get any of your questions answered, um, probably a little bit faster even than our Q&A over there on the side. There are two different ways to interact with the chatbot. You can literally just ask a question and if the answer is programmed in there or available in there, it's going to pop up. There's also a way of navigating through a menu that is pre-programmed pre in there. And the chatbot's going to be visible throughout the site, so it's going to be able to help you with pretty much anything that you need to know about when a speaker is going to be speaking, what technical sessions are available that day, um, where you can find exhibitors, and you know what networking opportunities are available during a given point in time. So now we're going to move on to how to navigate through the networking areas. And again, you can do that by going to the top menu or going straight through those navigation blocks. 
And what this brings you into is the matchmaking area of WebTech Connect. And when you first go into the matchmaking area, the first thing that you want to do is start working on your profile. And that's that profile icon in the upper right hand corner. And when you click on that, it brings up your profile area that you can edit. And the first item that you want to edit, if we can move forward, is your photo so that people can see you and not just a icon without a photo. And the next area that you want to edit, particularly so that the matchmaker can connect you with the right individuals within the, pro within the platform, are your topics of interest. And these should populate automatically to a degree, but you also have the ability to control them once you get in. So this is showing three topics of interest. You can add or remove them as you go through and that will adjust how your matches are set up as you'll see in a moment. You can also make other modifications while you are through going through here. You can manage your notifications. When you do that, it basically identifies whether or not you're going to get them, I believe. And those notifications show you on your right side, uh, basically all of your ongoing chats. Um, you can manage your availability. This brings up a calendar for the week. And you can handle your calendar one of three ways. You can basically mark a whole day as busy. You can mark your whole day as available. And then you can work into that specific times that you are available or busy. Um, and so this gives you a really good control over when people can request times with you for one-on-one -on -one video meetings within the matchmaking area. One nice feature of the matchmaking function is the ability to generate a CSV file of all of the meetings you have had. And we're going to cover this again at the very end, but it basically tells you who you've met with, what their topics of interest are, when you met with them, and you can export that at any time. And we're going to go back out of the profile and we're going to take a look at some of the features of the matchmaking itself. And this first one is individuals who are recommended for you. And again, those are built on what you have already set in that profile. And this gets smarter as you indicate who you are interested in and who you are not interested in. So it makes adjustments as you select people that you want to talk to and that you don't want to talk to. So as you say you are interested in meeting with Walter Marlowe, it will find more people who have interests that are like his, and then it will push them closer to the top of your recommendations if you skip him then it will remove people that are like that from your list. You can really click on people who are interested in you and then try to adjust your list that way. You can click on your list of people that you are interested in and see if you want to set meetings. You can click your skip list, but I've skipped highlighting that. Your schedule is not the schedule that we just looked at. It is the schedule that you already have of meetings or meetings that you already that already took place. And then there are three more areas here. There are the exhibitor booth staff, the exhibiting company, and visitors. And that is the list of those three, those are the specific lists of those three types of people. And I see that we have a lot of questions about that and we're going to try and get to those in our next section of Q&A. Um, but I'm guessing we're not going to be able to get to most of those and we're going to have to follow up with most of you after that um, or after this webinar. But once you have mutually indicated that you are interested in somebody, particularly an exhibitor, you're going to be able to chat with them one on one or you're going to be able to set up those meetings and those meetings are video meetings. And you have basically Zoom like capabilities within them. 
and then you can add additional individuals to the meetings as you need to. So we're going to talk a little bit about the sessions for site navigation as well. And again, it functions very much the same way. You can go from that top navigation bar or through the technical or, or through the navigation blocks, in this case, the technical session block. And this is going to bring you to the technical session landing page. And from here, you are able to filter by date, type, and track. You are also able to search on keywords. And then once this displays, it's going to default to your titles and speakers, and then you can expand to get additional information. And we are now at 120, and we do have some time to address some of these questions. So I'm going to see if I can filter through some of these. You cannot set an admin to handle your calendar. The question is, can I set an admin to handle my calendar? That is visible only to you. They would have to log in as you. Logins are one-to-one. -one, so it's basically you logging into the platform with your email address and the information we have given you. So that's, that is basically yours to manage. We have the question that is within the scheduling of availability. Is this per company or per employee? It is per employee. So there would need to be some coordination. Um, but from the visibility stamp, from the visibility standpoint, another the, the person who is trying to schedule a meeting can see the availability of each person in the company. So they would kind of have to look one by one to make sure. The chat feature cannot be turned off per se, um, but if you're not available, you're just going to be able to respond to that when you are available again. Okay, the, another question is, what is the platform for the meetings? It is not Zoom, it's something called Whereby, which is what GRIP uses, and GRIP is the match meeting, matchmaking feature. <laughs> okay, I see one note that says you're very confused. I will definitely follow up with you afterwards and we can talk about this a little bit further. Um, and I do see a number of other very specific questions. So we're going to tackle some of these. Um, I have names for every question that is in here. So we will definitely follow up on the rest as we go along. Including the see what's planned. Um, there's definitely way too many to get right now. I'm, I apologize. So I'm going to hand it back over to Kate to talk about the exhibitor showcase, and I'll see which ones of these I can get to while she's going through that. Thanks, Stephanie. And I did see one question. Will you be providing instructions on updating the matchmaking profile? Yes, we will. So um, once you reserve a exhibitor showcase uh, for Weft Tech, we'll be providing a full toolkit, um, including instructions on how to go through this process for each of your staff. So moving on to the Exhibitor Showcase examples and listings, we're gonna go through, I wanna um, just make a couple mentions. There's three different tiers of Exhibitor Showcases. With each of the three tiers, they all include company name and contact information, website and social links, the matchmaking feature that Stephanie has spoken about, and lead lists and reports. So as we go through each of these three, know that they all include that, but then there's some adjustments in a couple of different offerings and specifically allotments of how many you get of a particular feature. So I'll try and point those out as you move forward. So we're gonna start with the Premium Plus package, the Premium Plus Exhibit Showcase, that's our top tier showcase. And as you can see right at the top here, uh, this includes the ability to add on to 
uh, a 3D booth display. Um, exhibitors who select the Premium Plus package can add this on, um, and it includes a custom design and creation for you, uh, including animated introduction, 180 degree fly-in, custom colors. You can see the five interactive hotspots here. Um, when you click on them, they would link to a text, a PDF, or a video. Um, also included with this 3D display add-on is a chat with a specialist function. And this is an instant chat feature that specifically lies just next to your 3D booth display on your exhibitor showcase page. And when I talk about exhibitor showcase page, I'm talking about this entire page, just so we understand the, the terms and, um, that I'm using here. Um, so additionally, with the Premium Plus package, you get an exhibitor logo. You also have the uh, company description, uh, 3000 character limit. You have the product downloads, which are also called collateral. Um, you get up to eight product downloads and six videos. You have unlimited product categories. And additionally, you can register up to 12 showcase co contact registrations. Now with all of the showcases, just the first representative you designate will appear, as you see here on the showcase page. And then when you would click the schedule a meeting, that goes into the matchmaking feature that Stephanie was just showing us. And from there, you can select from the additional 11 staff uh, available with the Premium Plus package. Um, you also get unlimited uh, live meetings to schedule through the Premium Plus package. And it also includes two subsidiary listings, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So there's a second example. If you choose not to add on the 3D booth display and not include that in your Premium Plus package, you do have the option at no additional cost to include a custom header. And this is an example of it here. So this is another Premium Plus package example. It does not include this 3D booth add-on, but it includes this customized header as you can see at the top. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the premium showcase package. So this is the middle tier package. Um, you still have a 3000 character limit company description. It still includes the company logo. Your allotment of representative contacts is eight with the premium package and your collateral or also what's known as product downloads are at six and you can upload a total of four videos. And just to let you know, when you're looking at these product downloads, if you click on these examples of product downloads or white papers, case studies, product sheets, those kinds of things, um, when you would, someone, an attendee would click on here, it would populate a PDF. Uh, still unlimited product categories as part of the premium tier, and you do get one subsidiary listing. So moving on to our, our last package, our deluxe package. So this is the uh, third tier exhibitor package. You notice that there's no company logo included. Your company description has gone from 3,000, so it's a 2,000 character limit. And then there's an adjustment of up to four showcase registrations that can be included here. You can include up to four product downloads or collateral and up to two videos. And then as part of the matchmaking, there is a limit of 30 live meetings that can be scheduled. So this would be cumulative among your whole uh, all of your four staff can schedule up to a total of 30 live meetings with other exhibitors and attendees. Okay, so many of you might be wondering, well, how do attendees find me? Um, how do they know where to go or if they're looking for a specific product and service, how would they know to find me? So, 
If you recall on the first page, um, the landing page that was in a couple slides prior where it said exhibitors, networking, speakers, technical sessions, there was an exhibitor button. Now, one of those four buttons said exhibitors. You click on that and it comes to this exhibitor listings landing page. You have a couple different options here. You can just type in a keyword here. So any keyword that's part of your company description or anywhere on your exhibitor showcase page, if it's on that page and someone types it in, you get filtered into those results. You can also, um, attendees can come in and filter by location, which is by country. They can filter by product category as well. And then in terms of how you're seeing the listing here below the search bar, they're listed in order of uh, showcase package. So the premium plus package, which is the top tier package, those exhibitors would be listed first in alpha order, followed by premium exhibitors, followed by deluxe exhibitors. And then additionally, if you uh, have subsidiary listings, subsidiary listing companies would be listed under that. Okay, so we talked about the subsidiary listings. You'll notice in the premium plus and premium offerings, there's an allotment of subsidiary listings. So subsidiaries are related companies in which you want to have a presence uh, at Weft Tech Connect. So in this example, you can see that <clears throat> similar to the deluxe package, a company name is available. You can include a 2000 character description, up to 20 product categories social links, uh, website. What's different here is that though there's a representative contact listed, this person isn't actually registered as a staff member for Weft Tech Connect. So somebody could come on here, say, I'd like to connect with Howard and it'd have his phone number, his email and so forth, and they could reach out to them individually. They could not reach out to them through uh, the Weft Tech Connect platform. And that kind of aligns with the next point here, the matchmakings. You can see the schedule, the meeting function is missing here. And that is not part of the subsidiary listing. So this is um, a, a, a look at what the subsidiary listing looks like. So the subsidiary listing, in addition to the allotments for each of the packages, you can add them on individually. So perhaps you're a company that wants to add an additional five, five subsidiary listings, you can add that as an a la carte option. Additionally, you'll see the 3D booth design and production uh, a la carte option is listed. And also we have a press kit listed in the press room if that's of interest. Um, to talk about a new product and service that you're releasing or something that's going on in your organization that you want Weft Tech attendees to know about, um, that would be a great opportunity for you. And then um, last but not least, we have the 20 minute exhibitor demo with the interactive chat. And exhibitors have the opportunity to purchase this 20 minute exhibitor demo. Um, it is a live on the session side, so it does not sit on your exhibitor showcase page, but it sits on the technical session side. For the demo, you would pre-record your content, providing a video demo and or combination with PowerPoint to create your content. Then on a specified date and time, and all exhibitor demos will take place during exhibitor power hours, uh, if you recall Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, um, during that time, we would have a specified date and time where your uh, exhibitor demo would be posted. And during that time, you would be live interacting on the interactive chat with attendees answering questions. So that is another opportunity available to you. So we do have an exhibit reservation deadline. If you'd like to purchase an exhibitor showcase, you do need to reserve with us by September 1st. And you'll see the link uh, under the deadline, weftech.org forward slash exhibit. That is where you can go to, uh, one, find a recording of this demo, uh, two, the exhibit contract. Additionally, the exhibitor prospectus is there. And you'll also find a lot of other tools that you're going to need to make you successful as an exhibitor at Weft Tech Connect this fall. So keep that link in mind. 
and we're going to move into the questions. Okay. I've been tackling some of the questions as we go. We have a lot of questions about the exhibitor demo. Let me see, can you do more than one exhibitor demo? Yes, you can have more than one exhibitor demo. Kate will be happy to follow up with you about that. Which tiers include the subsidiaries? Premium Plus and Premium include the subsidiaries. That is correct. Interactive chat, it kind of depends on what you're asking. For the demo purposes specifically, um, in terms of having an interactive chat with a video, yes, that is only available during the 20 minute demo. However, there is an interactive chat as part of the matchmaking as well. Um, so you can always have an interactive video chat with another attendee um, through the matchmaking. Um, we can kind of tackle that one a little bit offline if we need to. There's a question about are the live meetings one-on-one -on -one or can multiple attendees join? This is an interesting one because you can only set up a one-on-one -on -one live meeting. However, once that live meeting has been created and the two original participants are in there, you can invite others. So there is a limit as to how many people can be in that live meeting, um, that those live meetings are set to be limited to 15 people. But once you have those two people in there, you can invite additional people. We're gonna get to the answer about collateral download and video view reports later, but you do get reports on interactive interaction with your showcase. Um, similar question above that. And we have a couple more minutes to answer questions. So our sample is obviously just a sample. The question is, how do you select what video to watch when they don't show the titles on this example? And it is only an example. Typically, the videos will show the titles. Uh, there's another question about, are the video links that show in the 3D booth display separate from the six video uploads? Yes, they are separate. So you have the six videos below, and then your five pieces of collateral or your five, in, your five hotspots are whatever you're going to put in there. So that 3D booth is completely separate from whatever you put into the rest of your showcase. The header or the 3D booth is an either or. And there's also a question, uh, uh, are there any staff that get pre-included access to the conference and technical sessions? All booth staff have access to the conference and technical sessions. And that's whether they are part of your original allotment or that they are part of your paid staff. So regardless of which those are, they have access to technical sessions. And there's a question about demoing software as a live demo. Um, there are a couple of different ways you can handle that. You could purchase an exhibitor demo and use the live Q&A. You could also include that in one of your videos and then have chats separate from those videos as part of the meetings that you set up. Ah, excellent question about creating the 3D booth. You work with a provider on creating that and they customize that for you. And we will get to the categories in a minute. And I think we want to move on from Q&A right now and continue with everything else and make sure that we have time for all the content and then we can kind of tackle the Q&A in a little bit. And as I mentioned, um, some of the things that are being asked are covered right here. And the very first thing that I want to talk about is how you get your content or some of your content into the platform so that attendees can find you either in WebTech Connect or in the mobile app. 
So we're going to start right off with sending us your directory descriptions. We have our time honored update exhibitor directory listing. And this lets you put in your company name and address, which we use for the mobile app, as well as your contact name and phone number. This is not what, what we're showing right here is not what is going to be used in Web Tech Connect, but it is what we're going to use in the mobile app. And then most importantly, on the next slide is this description, which we are going to use for the base of what is going into Web Tech Connect and will show in the mobile app and then our standard categories. So these are our primary categories and under each one of these it pops out to the subcategories and these are the ones we've used for ever basically um, they do get updated from time to time so like this industrial internet of things is our newest and so these are the ones that you pick from to help the filters in the mobile app and help the filters at that header page that you saw earlier to make sure that you are found now I want to move on to I believe it's VIP guest invites. Yes. So this is our third year working with VIP guest invites. This is available in August. There's no cost to you. You get to customize this. Uh, you will obviously be working with Web Tech Connect art and not our sample Web Tech 2019 art. Each exhibitor gets a unique invite code that attendees will use during their registration to discount their registration, which is essentially a free expo only or what we are now calling the exhibitor showcase registration. You will also be able to log or keep track of who is using your code through your VIP guest invites dashboard. So that will make it easier for you to follow up with the attendees who are using your codes and give you a good advanced lead tool. Moving on, we always encourage that you use the pre-registered attendee list um, to help with your promotions. While this is a little bit rough, these are some of the headers that are included in this. So you're going to see that you have all of your basic address information, your registration type, their purchasing power, whether they are, whether they are decision makers, everything that they are interested in, as well as their organization and their job. So this lets you do a couple of things. This lets you identify who in the who in the registration list is your audience. And then this also lets you cross-reference this against your existing contacts to send out promotions because this particular list does not include email addresses. And then finally, we want to talk about the lead lists that do come from Web Tech Connect. Um, these are available post-event. They do include those soft leads that we were talking about or that somebody was asking about earlier. This includes email addresses, and this shows who visited your showcase, who viewed your PDFs and videos. There is some dwell time information in there. There will be a limit to the usage of the emails of, that, of those soft leads. You will also get the lead information for the attendees who you did interact with via chat or meetings. And then just to double back quickly about your reports that you're getting from matchmaking, you're going to get a history of all those meetings in CSV, which will include your event, the date, the time, who you spoke with, and their topics of interest. So you'll have an automatic track of what those people were interested in when you talk to them. It doesn't record those meetings, but you at least have a kind of quick reference of who you spoke with. And Stephanie, it's Kate. I'd love to interject here. Um, in addition to these lead reports that you get, and these will be available to you about a week after the event, as we said before, WEF Tech Connect will be available for a full year after the event takes place. So though the matchmaking component in having live meetings and accessing those recommendations happen October 5th through 9th, your showcase page stays live and available for a full year after. What that means is anyone that clicks on a particular product download, like your white paper or a case study or a particular video, 
you're going to get continually to get regular reports of those interactions and those leads with contact information for a full year. That's correct. Great. So the last thing I want to mention is that we obviously really only scratched the surface here. So we are going to host another webinar in August that's going to be a much deeper dive on a lot of the things that we've started to talk about. We're going to really get into the materials, how you get those into the showcase, how you can prepare your staff for the showcase um, to tackle some of those questions about timing. Um, and then a lot more about matchmaking because that's probably one of the keys. And then I think we are back into Q&A and we have a lot. I can, I can start off, Stephanie. Um, okay. Is there a limit to booth staff? So with each of the exhibitor allotments and the exhibitor prospectus with all of the showcases and pricing are is available on weftech.org forward slash exhibit. Um, each has an allotment of booth staff. However, beyond each of those allotments, you can purchase an additional 20 registrations at $100 a piece. And just as a reminder, um, the showcase registrations do also allow access to the technical sessions. There's a question about the timing of the reporting that is year round and how often we're going to be doing that. And that's likely going to be at specified intervals. So something along the lines of every few weeks, we will be sending out those lead reports for exhibitors. There's a question here I don't quite understand about driving traffic to your booth after WebTech event for the next year. So I'm going to follow up on that one. There is a question about the 3D booth. So we are, um, first of all, the platform we're working with um, is called Fusion. It's with um, Freeman. And specifically, the creation of the 3D booth displays is done by one of their subsidiaries called Helios. And if you would like to have a 3D booth created, it does need to be created by Helio. So you would need to purchase it through us to be able to have it sit on the platform in the way that we show it to you and as an example. Um, however, if you are interested in producing your own external 3D booth display, or perhaps you already have one created, we do have some additional options on how you might be able to link, um, how you can um, to that external 3D display. So I can speak with those interested one-on-one -on, -one on how that might work. There's a question here about whether or not we are planning for a scavenger hunt. And we definitely are. It is a sponsorship opportunity. I will follow up with you about that. Kate, this looks like a question for you. There is a company that has a brand and a sub-brand and whether or not they can split the exhibitor booth to showcase both brands. And it looks like a great case study for a subsidiary. Yes, exactly. Um, you would have one company have a deluxe premium or premium plus showcase and then you could have your secondary company as a subsidiary as stephanie said and, and happy to connect one-on-one -on -one to review that visual so that makes sense um i'm also seeing a question stephanie does the vip guest pass only work for weft tech members first let me unmute 
Uh, the VIP guest invite works for anyone, which is why it's up to a $60 value. So it will work for anybody using that code. Um, it's an, we found that the usage for that is about 90% non-member to 10% member, which is a little bit interesting to me. Um, but you can basically any attendee using that code will have free access. It's a great tool. Um, in the past, we have seen that exhibitors who do take advantage of that have greater leads and greater traffic. Great. I have another question about a refund. So again, that's a specific organizational question that I'll answer individually. However, I did want to let everyone know that your participation in WEF Tech Connect does earn you one priority point and allows you to participate in WEF Tech 2021 advanced sales. Um, of course, as you might guess, we won't be having uh, WEF Tech advanced sales in person this year, but online. And we'll have more information around uh, selection and details in September. I see a question here about upgrading on site, and that's an incredibly important point that we uh, did not talk about. So the question is, if a deluxe package was purchased, can they upgrade to a premium tier after the exhibit starts? And one of the things that is important to remember is that we have some limitations working with a virtual event that we do not have with an on-site event in that everything does need to be finalized during the periods of time that we have set as deadlines so if you have purchased a deluxe package and you are locked in as of our september 7th date with all of your collateral then we at a certain point in time are not going to be able to make that change so once you have approved your booth with us that is the booth that you have your booth your showcase i'm so sorry um once our event starts, we cannot make any changes. Yeah, and, and just to add on, if you're trying to understand what might be the best package for you, I would be more than happy to connect with you one-on-one, -on -one, talk about your company's specific goals and needs and, and have a conversation so you feel comfortable in making sure you have the right showcase uh, for your organization. I see another question here. Uh, Will the re pre registration attendee list be emailed and do you have an estimated date? So, similar to the in person event, all exhibitors have access to the registration list via the registration portal where you tell us who's going to receive those virtual badges um, and it's through Experient. So, once you reserve an exhibitor showcase with you and I process your application and send you a confirmation about a week from then, you'll have access into the registration portal where you can continually access an updated registration list. Um, and another question on to that, does it include email addresses? No, so per WEF's privacy policy, um, we do not include email addresses or fax numbers in the registration list. We do include first name, last name, company, job title if provided, um, mailing address. However, separately, in the lead report that we talked about that uh, has all the interactions of what happened during WEF Tech Connect, you will receive full contact information, including email addresses with that. So I have two back-to-back -back questions here that are about visibility and linking. So the first is about linking to special tools and information on your website. And there is one primary external link to your site or wherever it is that you wish to go. So one of the things that we've seen exhibitors do in the past with um, the links that they use either on the mobile app or somewhere else is they prepare a special page for the event. So if you are doing something along those lines, you can have a unique page that links externally that has those special tools and information and that is the web link that you're going to use on your showcase um, and we can follow up and get more in detail on that if you need to and immediately following that is a question about providing brand recognition for specific software products um, and kind of a question about the differences between the deluxe package 
and the premium package and what is available between the two. And I think that's something that Kate is going to want to follow up with you on directly to explain what the availabilities are between those two things because it's more than just the logo on the premium package that is provided in terms of getting more videos, more PDFs, more people, um, as well as more meeting time in particular. But I think that Kate can definitely follow up with you specifically to talk through that. So I'm going to jump to the very last question that the FAQ says you do not need a webcam, but in the matchmaking there is a video chat function. So it is true that you do not need a webcam, but if you do want to take advantage of the video chats and have your face seen, um, it is likely helpful to have one that is built in. It is also possible that you can use a mobile device for that function. Um, and we can definitely get through the very specific details about that. We do have sponsorship packages and we can have somebody contact you about those. I'm also seeing is the Web Tech Connect only available to people who have registered for the event or is it open to anyone after the event? So you do have to register for the event. Um, there is a fee and as Stephanie said, as exhibiting partners, you have the opportunity to invite as many of your uh, customers and prospects as you'd like with that free VIP guest pass. Now, that doesn't allow them access to the technical session, but it allows them access specifically to the virtual exhibitor showcase available to interact with you. There is another question about the priority points. Uh, does the one priority point add to the one you can earn with transferring the fee to next year's booth? Kate, do you want to take that? Um, sure, yes. So if you did roll over fees to WEF Tech 2021, um, that earns you a priority point. Additionally, participating in WEF Tech Connect this fall earns you a priority point. So you could potentially have two priority points total as you go into WEF Tech 2021 advanced sales? Good question. And there's a question about how many attendees we're hoping for. We're hoping for 20,000. Um, but we have never held a virtual event before, so we do not have a specific expectation of how many are likely to attend. Um, just as we don't have a specific expectation of how many exhibitors are likely to participate via showcases. So our specific expectations are we are going to continue to promote, we're going to continue to market the event, and we are going to be happy with <laughs> as many as we can possibly get. Yeah, and I will add too, we just opened registration July 13th, so we're just over about 200 registrants, um, so we're really excited about that, and I will also add that, um, and as you might imagine, you know, attendees aren't having to think about being out of the office, getting on a plane, making those flights, making the hotels, so our data research does tell us that a lot of attendees for virtual events are starting to, um, or tend to register closer to the event date, um, but we are happy to continue to be transparent with you. Um, and as I said, you can continually access the pre-registrant list through the Experian registration portal once you've reserved a showcase. I'm also seeing a couple of questions about international visitors and uh, international hours for chat options. And yes, the platform is available 24 hours, so it does not shut down as at any specific point in time. So if there are international hours scheduled for meetings, you can definitely take advantage of those. And if you have chat functions that you want to take care of, you can definitely take advantage of that as well. And there's also a question about 
um, not using all of the allotted content features for the page. Um, and if that will make the page look like it is incomplete and the pages are completely flexible. So it's not like there are slots for things that will show up if you don't include them. So whatever is on the page will look like what is supposed to be on the page. Stephanie, I see we're just at two o'clock. I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but if, if, if we can keep answering maybe a couple more questions. And then of course, as we said, um, we will definitely follow up with each of you individually for any questions that we didn't get to address today. Um, one question, do you have to monitor your leads or are you notified of new leads after the show date? So um, I believe there is a function within the matchmaking feature that when someone notifies you, you are or um, shows interest in you, you are emailed and you do get a notification um, within the platform. Stephanie, can you further comment on that? Yeah. Um, so the leads, as, as we mentioned before, and as Kate just said, are available as a report at the end of the event and then as follow-up reports throughout the year. So there's not a specific notification like daily or hourly as you have new leads. There's a question about adding backgrounds to the chats. The chat function, the video chat function does not have that capability. That one's pretty easy. Um, there's also a question about videos being uploaded. Those are supported through Vimeo or YouTube. I'm trying to pick off short and easy ones here. I think the rest of these are ones that we're going to really have to answer offline. Oh, here's one more that I think we can do right now. There's a question about if you get notifications of when somebody wants to chat. And yes, that was that notifications indicator that I showed early on during the matchmaking function. So that just shows you when you get a chat request. Wonderful. Well, we want to thank everyone for participating today. Again, we're, we're continuing to see these questions stream in. So um, we will be following up with each of you individually. Um, you can see our WEF exhibitions team and contacts here. Uh, again, if you'd like to invest in an exhibitor showcase, if you would like to access the prospectus, the contract, and the exhibitor tools that will be posted, um, go to weftech.org forward slash exhibit to learn more. We'll be in touch. And again, thank you so much for attending today's demo. Thanks. Thank you, everyone.